everybody. Welcome. This is uh, getting started with QJS and WordPress with Eric Arbe. I just want to say a few things real quick. After this is lunch. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, just uh, also please silence your cell phones and if you're tweeting, use the hashtag. To you. Awesome. Thank you very much, <coughs> John. All right. Is this thing on? Ooh. I don't, do I need that? You guys, can you hear me okay in the back and everything? Yeah? Okay. So I may go in and out of using that because I like to fidget, move around. So, um, all right. Lunch is next. This is my first talk I've ever given before lunch, which is awesome. I always have the after lunch crowd and everybody's all sleepy. So now I know you're all anxious to get to lunch. So we'll be out of here in five minutes so we can be the first to get lunch. <laughs> so. Anyway, there's a story behind Out in Five. I used to have an uh, uh, economics professor in college, and old guy, he's like 80 years old, but he was the coolest teacher ever. He would always write up on the chalkboard, Out in Five. And uh, about half the time, he would actually let us out in five minutes. He'd give us a five-minute talk about economics, then we'd be done. The other half the time, Out in Five would still sit up on the board, and he'd go through an hour of talking, and I'd be like, oh, you told us five minutes. <laughs> So he'd always trick us like that, um, but either way, I thought that was pretty funny. So we're gonna, uh, we're gonna move through some stuff. I've got some things that uh, may get a little bit technical. Um, if it is, and you need more explanation, um, too bad. Uh, otherwise, just hit me up at lunch or something, you know, we'll talk through it. If you wanna talk more about Vue.js, it's awesome. Um, so without further delay, let's open the slides here. So, all right. WordPress and Vue.js, two things I think that go hand in hand really good together. Uh, that's what this talk about is about. We're going to just kind of, like I said in the, the presentation intro that I wrote a few months ago, um, we're just going to dip our toes into, into Vue.js and see what it can do. Um, it's, it's a pretty awesome framework. It's not a framework, I should say, I like to preface this, it's not just a hot new thing. I think it is here to stay. And uh, I've been using it for a while on quite a few projects. It's, it's pretty fantastic. And again, if you don't need it for a project, don't use it. No big deal. So, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Eric Arbe. Uh, I've been using WordPress for a long time now, since like 2008, 2007, something like that. So, I use WordPress for all my clients' websites. I actually started, uh, I went to college to become a golf professional and got a business degree as well. So, I'm still a golf pro, but I was never a programmer by trade or, or by education or anything like that. So, I'm 100% self-taught. The internet is a wonderful place to learn all kinds of things. Stack Overflow is like, you know, my primary mentor. And um, so I, you can find me on Twitter there, at Eric Arbe, if you want to see, you know, five tweets a month. And um, I basically uh, put this together in hopes that you guys will walk away with, with a little bit of knowledge about Vue.js, how you can implement it into a WordPress theme, maybe for your own, like, side project, maybe for a client's project. Um, you kind of see all the, the cool things it can do, but we're just going to kind of just like I said, dip our toes into it, not get too crazy in depth. Oh, look at that. That was my next slide about today's goal. So WordPress as a database, that's kind of what we're going to talk a little bit about today. Uh, is anyone in here familiar with the WordPress REST API? A couple, awesome, perfect. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about that and then kind of consuming that API and, and using it uh, on the front end in your browser with Vue.js. So fun stuff. All right, has anyone, I should preface this, has anyone used Vue in a um, project at all before? All right, a couple hands, awesome, cool. If you haven't, it's great. You probably have, oh, that text is really small. Increase that a little bit. All right, so hopefully you can kind of see that. So Vue is a, is a framework, if you ever heard of Angular or React, uh, it's kind of similar. The guy, he actually, that, that created Vue, he worked on Angular for a while. He helped build it, and then he said, hey, I'm going to build my own. I'm going to take all the best bits and pieces of these other JavaScript frameworks and build my own. And so he did. And it's called Vue.js. His name is Evan Yu, uh, super smart guy. And if you ever listen to him talk, it's like way over my head. I don't understand half the things that he's talking about. But it's, uh, it's a progressive framework. So that's one reason I think it fits really well with WordPress. If you guys have heard of React before, right, by Facebook, uh, you may hear that as well in Gutenberg blocks, uh, in those talks about building your own custom Gutenberg stuff. Um, it's a little, I think the learning curve is a little bit steeper with React because you have to compile it. There's some things you have to know ahead of time. 
With Vue, you can literally drop it into your project. If you want to drop it into your theme right now and start using it, you can, just with a little script tag like that, kind of like jQuery. I'm sure you've all have, have touched jQuery at some point or another. It comes you know, bundled with WordPress, but it's probably come bundled with uh, some theme that you've used. You probably had to you know, troubleshoot for a client somewhere along the line. Something happened, something broke, there was a console error. Um, so Vue, that, that's what I really like about Vue. You can just drop it into your theme and get going with it right away. Also, it has this whole ecosystem. It has a CLI. You can build entire projects with Vue, just like you can with React or Angular. You can build your whole stack right now uh, based on JavaScript and using Vue as a front end and kind of the back end as well. So the guy uh, that created it, um, he, one of the things he really noticed was uh, the documentation was not poor, but maybe lacking on other framework websites. And that was one thing that he really focused on and they continue to focus on. So just like WordPress, the, the docs for WordPress are really nice and, and legible and easily laid out. They are for Vue as well. So that, that's one of the fantastic things about it. And there's a good community around it. They already have, you know, it is, like I said, a relatively new framework. And um, it's, it's, it's already got like conferences and stuff like that. So really good community. Uh, I forgot to ask you guys, does, this, does that look better? Is that easier on the eyes? No? Yeah? Either way? Okay, cool. We'll, we'll keep it like that until it's not good. All right, let's go back down. Reset. Okay, cool. So let's dive right into Vue. Again, Vue, JavaScript. This is JavaScript. Um, so uh, I'm using CodePen here, which is great, codepen.io, to, to demonstrate this little thing right here. This is, uses uh, string interpolation. <laughs> Who cares what that is? See the double uh, handle um, curly braces right there? All right, that's what we're going to use here to make our app, our web page, reactive. That, that's one of the really cool things about Vue. It can instantly make your web page reactive. Let's say you've wanted to do something based on user input, right? You want to build something that you know uh, Sarah Drasner, who, who tweets about Vue all the time, um, she made this cool like little wine bottle maker. You know, you, you type in the name of your uh, your wine, and it boom spits it out right there on a little wine bottle on the web page. So that's like, it's got some reactivity to it. So I'm sure you guys have had projects or you've had ideas where, oh, it'd be cool to make this little, you know, cat meme generator. And uh, do I want the user to put in this and then it prints out the picture? Well, with Vue, it makes it super simple to do that. So uh, as you can see, I'm just gonna walk through this a little bit right here, down in the JavaScript part there. If you can kind of see that, it's a little bit hard to see. Um, that is all the JavaScript you need to make this web page reactive. So anytime you update the data, which is called your text down below there, as you can see in the video there, it instantly changes. So instantly your data becomes reactive. Let's, uh, let's dive into that a little bit more. I'll show you an actual example here. This is kind of the same thing. So if you want to make that wine label maker or whatever it is, that cat meme generator, you've got your input box, your, uh, you know, the client, the user can type in text, Bam, it's right on the web page. Kind of cool. So, got my actual own code pen. Oh, and in the slides, I'll give you the link for the slides afterwards. It's, it's slides.eric.be. Um, I'll show you. If you guys want that now, I'll give you that now. Instead of waiting. Slides.eric, it's my name. So, just go there and you'll see all these slides. A couple of them aren't in there because I updated this. Um, I did give this talk at WordCamp Atlanta. Um, but I updated it fresh for you guys. And uh, so if you guys want to check that out, you can. So, all right. So yeah, the reason me saying that, you can find all these uh, little code pens on CodePen, and I got a link on there. So, hello, everyone, all right? And we're gonna do like some, some live coding and stuff today. So something may go terribly wrong and, and break, and I can't wait for that to happen. Yeah, it's always fun, right, live coding. So here's, this is all the JavaScript that was necessary right here. This, yes, I'm going to do that right now. Um, this is all the JavaScript that was needed to make that reactive. How cool is that? So the, the big mind shift, though, with Vue, and especially if you've all come from jQuery or just vanilla JavaScript and what you've seen from it, is you are not just manipulating the DOM now. You're not just putting like a div, you know, a strong with like an ID or something you're actually using new syntax in your HTML. 
So this was like a real mind shift for me when I started using Vue with, with my WordPress themes. Again, almost all the client websites I build are on WordPress. So that's obviously the, the reason for this talk. But um, I was able to, to walk in right into some of my themes, my custom themes, and just drop it in and, and start making things reactive and, and using Vue right away. So there's a few new things, though, that you'll have to add to your HTML to make Vue work properly. So this is a good thing and a, I don't want to say a bad thing, but it's, it definitely requires a little bit of learning shift, a little bit of mind shift. And once I kind of understood it, I was like, wow, Vue is really, really powerful. So all I had to do there was, was use my double curly braces here and use my input text. And you'll see in my JavaScript here, under data, I have the word input text as well. And that they, they correlate. So basically, anything I, I put in there in, the, uh, in my V model, let me back up here a second. My V model is attaching that input to that data type called input text. You can see both the exact same name. And then lets me make it reactive. So anything that I put in the input, it goes into that, that double curly brace there on the left. Kind of makes sense a little bit. So I know it's, it's, a, it's a very different kind of way of thinking about it, especially, like I said, I came from jQuery. I came just from vanilla JavaScript, and it was a total mind shift in, in how to do this. Um, so moving on. That's kind of like our first concept there. And I keep talking about jQuery. You're like, all right, well, cool. Do I need to replace jQuery? Well, you can. You don't have to. Um, they can work together. I'm actually going to show you a project I built where I'm using them both together. I really shouldn't because I don't need jQuery in it, but I just kind of did because it was there. So it was just me being a lazy developer. I shouldn't have done that. But anyway, you can see they both weigh about the same. When they're both minified, um, they both come in at the same. So if you worry about like your page speed and slowing things down, um, they're, they're both about the same size. All right, moving on. So I want to show you guys some examples of like what you would do in jQuery and then how you would do it in Vue, right? Because again, this is kind of going into the assumption you've all kind of seen jQuery and, and know kind of its syntax in a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to show you the syntax for using something with Vue. And then we're going to dive into a little more WordPress stuff later on in the talk. So, all right, I've got this thing right here in jQuery, what you would do. You've got your div ID of an app, you've got a label, and then you've got an input, right? Oh, and then you've got your P, your, your paragraph, right? So this is where this is the example that I just gave of like your reactive text. This is kind of how you would make a reactive in jQuery. We've got some some uh, JavaScript here, right? You got your function, you've got your key up function. So every time you you know you, you change keys, you go to the next key. Um, this function is going to run. You've got your form name, right? We're creating a variable, and I'm I'm down here. I hope you guys can kind of see the TV there. Um, right, so you're finding the, the class of dot form name, which is right here. Um, your input, you're going to find your, your ID of your thing, which is right here. Oh, sorry, it's right here, it's my input. So I'm grabbing the value of my input, and then I'm popping that into the paragraph, uh, the, the class of form name. So I'm appending it. All right, now in view, check this out. Right? A lot less. I mean, that, that's pretty cool. When I saw this, I was like, OK, that's pretty awesome with the stuff you can do. And then it gets, this is like, like I said, this is just dipping our toes in. It gets way more powerful from here. But this, just showing you like on the surface level of what, of what it can do, um, it's a lot. So again, like I said, the new thing that we kind of learned is that we added a little bit new HTML up here. We've got this V model which we attach that uh, to the, the, the data, which is called name, down here. Everything else is the same. Input, ID, type, text, that's all the same. And then down here, we use this new syntax of the, uh, the double curly braces, putting the, the name of that, that piece of data, which is down here, and that's it. it. It's instantly, Vue makes it reactive. Vue does all the heavy stuff and the heavy lifting for you. So this is kind of just, just touching the surface of like, what's possible in, in making things reactive. Another thing that, that I really don't jump into too much uh, in this uh, talk is that Vue is great for animation uh, in terms of like timing things and um, you know, like your intro, your outro, and, and different stuff like that. Animation can be, can be used in really good conjunction with Vue.js. So 
how many times have you guys wanted to toggle a class in jQuery, right? This is actually you know, something I use probably all the time, from like opening a menu or closing a menu or changing a color with a button click, something like that, or hiding something or showing it. I mean, it's, it's a pretty you know, commonly used thing. I think this is like the, the post where I, I pulled some of this from uh, by Sarah Drasner, credits to her. Um, I think this is like the top thing jQuery was used for. Like out of all like the stuff like jQuery could be used for, and as big of a library it is, this is the biggest thing is like toggling a class, which is kind of funny, right? So um, you've got, and, and they have that pre-built function in there called toggle class, right? So I'm saying my class of dot toggle, which is my, uh, my paragraph here, um, toggle the class of red on or off when I click the button. So when I, you know, on click my button, we'll toggle that class, either red or not. Or, now this, this again was a little bit more JavaScript and a little bit more of a mind shift for me, but in Vue.js, more, um, more of the action happens in the actual HTML up here. So down in my view, right, I've got my data. All I have in the data here of my view instance, as this is called, uh, is the data of active. And it's set to, to a Boolean. Is it true or false? So is it active or is it not, right? It's kind of like in the previous example, is it red or is it not red, okay? Then I've got, this is like what, what really blew my mind. I was like, oh, you, we're gonna put things in the HTML again, right? I, right here in my button, my at click function is gonna happen in the HTML. And I started to realize why, why he built Vue.js like this, is that when you're talking about building semantic code and readable code, maybe something that you can pass on to your developers, and especially making your development time a little bit faster, if you can look down your HTML and kind of see what's going on, especially in more of an application where things are reactive and things like do things, um, if you can look at your HTML and instantly kind of see what's going on, that's going to be a little bit faster and a little bit easier to process for you as a developer when you come in there and say, oh, okay, I see what's going on now. I'm getting the big picture. Versus if there was, if there was just classes here and then you had to go back and look at your jQuery, to see, all right, what class was that name? And then you, you know, toggled when you click this button called this class. Um, it, it, it takes a little bit more time and you know, processing of your, your brain power to be like, all right, what really is going on here? So this, uh, the way they do it in Vue, is, is very easy and legible when it's actually in the HTML like that. And I, I hated on this at first. When I first saw this, I was like, oh, Vue sucks. I was like, why would they do that? Why would they put your, your kind of elements like that in the HTML? But once I, once I realized why, I was like, okay, yeah, this is pretty cool. So when you're clicking it, so you're, you're clicking it, you're saying we're making it active or we're not making it active, depending on what it currently is right now, depending on the current state of your data. And, and then we're changing the class right here. This is kind of a, a dynamic class. Again, a little, little syntax piece there from Vue with the, the colon in front of the, the word class, and we're saying uh, the, the class will be colorful, that's the name of the class, if active is true. So that, that took me a minute to like wrap my brain around it and, and, and see how that worked. And that's actually, see this night mode? That's exactly how night mode is working there. I'm just toggling classes. So. Moving on, and it, uh, again, I know kind of the questions are usually at the end, but in a talk like this, if you guys do have questions in the middle that you think, oh yeah. I'm having trouble typing down the PowerPoint. Can you, can you show me where you can the, the, the slide? You having trouble tracking down the PowerPoint? Yeah, how to get to your slides. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 oh, yeah. Sorry, so that was my big reveal at the end. This is not done in PowerPoint. Um, <laughs> Just the URL, head over to that URL, slides.ericar.be. Oh, that doesn't make that any bigger, does it? Yeah, can you see that? No? <laughs> yeah, I'll spell it for you. It's slides.ericar.be. It's a Belgium <laughs> domain name. <laughs> But it spells my name, Eric Arbe. Um, yeah, sorry that's so small. I can't uh, increase the size of that. Only that does. Yeah, it doesn't do the URL. That sucks. Okay. Can you, good? Cool. All right, sorry about that. So, yeah. 
that is where you'll find those. Okay, cool. Moving on, so toggling class, the most you know, popular jQuery uh, thing done with jQuery. So here's my example. Am I colorful? Bam, this is a, the exact um, example I just gave. Let's zoom that in. There we go. So there's my JavaScript to do that. Uh, there's my HTML, like I just showed right there. And CSS, the only thing you really need to worry about CSS is, so it's an H2, and then with, it's an H2 with the class of dot colorful, and that gives you your fancy result there. So it's not colorful, click it, and it is colorful. Cool, right? Simple-ish. I don't want to say easy. I've heard you're always supposed to say uh, it's simple, it's not easy. When you're explaining things to people, like, oh yeah, it's simple, like, yeah, right. It's, it's easy, sure it is. I'm supposed to say it's simple. Okay, one more concept here before we dive into like real world stuff. Uh, the VIF, and this is uh, a definitely a really, really cool thing. When we get in a little bit technical here, but if you load something in the DOM, the document object model, and you want to use a particular um, CSS animation on it, sometimes that gets tricky if it's already loaded in the DOM, right? If there's some kind of like um, entrance class that you want to give it to so something like fades in, right? If you want to like rerun that, that uh, can pose a bit of a problem because it's already in the DOM, it's already loaded. So what VIF does, it's, it's really cool that it does in Vue, uh, Vue uses what's called a virtual DOM. So uh, if you use VIF on something, uh, see where it says I am completely hidden unless loading is equal to true, that is not even loaded on the web page. It's not even loaded in the actual DOM. So once <laughs> VIF loading equals true, I'm sorry, if, if it's false, it won't even be loaded in the DOM. Once it becomes true, right, then that view pulls it into the DOM, bam, loads it in there. Then you can use your CSS animation on it the way you expect to use it. So I know there's a glitch there. I've ran into that several times before, um, like certain animations that I like want to rerun again. And that makes it really easy to do that. So that's kind of like a handy little thing right there. So, so VIF, again, this is another like, like little mind shift of actually loading in um, your, your logic here into the HTML, because that's a whole new syntax right there, that whole VIF. And then you can put like regular like JavaScript-like syntax into that statement right there. So you know, I'm using the, the triple equal sign and bam, saying if it's true, um, give it the class of loading. Or I'm sorry, if it's true, then, then load this whole div. Otherwise, that whole div doesn't even load. No. All right. Cool. So, like I told you guys before, I am a golfer. Um, so, uh, my company is called Golf Web Design, and uh, we build hundreds of websites for golf courses and clients all over the country. We've been there for a while. Now, we, we also do uh, regular small business and things like that. So, this isn't our, our only jam right now. But we did a cool little um, uh, directory search here for the Northern California Golf Association. And I hope this video isn't too jarring for you, but basically, it's a search, right? It's all based on WordPress. And this is basically pretty much a single page application. It's a search, finds those search results, pulls them back, plots them on a map, and then you can actually view the individual um, search results, so that actual golf course. And this is all built with WordPress. The entire database, it was an existing WordPress database that was like a mess. It was like some developer went in there and made like some custom tables. And I was like, why did they do this? I was like, we could just use a custom post type with custom fields. And so that's what we did. And so, so really cleaning up their data, that was the biggest piece. This was like the fun part, was building out the front end right here. So I want to show you guys like a little bit how this works and, and seeing it like in a, in a real world application. Um, because this is this was a really it was a nice little project. Um, they were very happy with the result. Um, but before we we're going to dive right into it in a second, I want to show you what the actual HTML looks like for this project. So again, I've got some some you're going to see like lots of like logic, like I said, built into the actual HTML, and this is directly in a WordPress template page in a you know .php file. Um, so I've got my double uh, curly brace syntax there. I got the title of the golf course, which is my result.title, course type, address, things like that. 
So it, it doesn't look too crazy. So when you're actually looking at it, you're like, okay, I can kind of see what's going on, right? It, it's somewhat readable. Again, that's, that's another great thing that I, I really enjoy about Vue. All right, let's dive, let's dive straight into that. I don't, wanna, I don't wanna wait any longer. Okay, so San Francisco, here's what's happening. I've got a search bar and when I hit search, it's basically gonna call an Ajax request. So I went to the functions.php file for my custom WordPress theme, which really wasn't too crazy of a theme. It was a really small theme that I built. And the Ajax request basically does a, um, uh, a loop, uh, a WP query, which you've all built any kind of theme or had to modify a theme, you probably know what the WP query is. And it just loops through that custom post type of golf course. I could have just used the posts golf uh, you know, post type if I wanted to, but I thought I'd make it a little bit more, you know, friendly on the back end. Um, so it loops through all there and basically, you know, does some parameters by location or by name and returns to me what it actually returns is a JSON file. That, that's what it actually returns. And then I consume that, that JSON data with Vue.js. I don't know if I'm running in, oh, look at that. And I even left it in here for you guys. Cool. Cool, cool. So, I'll show you what this data looks like live. Oops. Again, the live stuff. Always got to be wary of that. All right, cool. So you're probably like, ooh, this looks like code. This looks like, this looks like an endpoint, right? This looks like an API. Yes, it does. And it's, it's beautiful, isn't it? Isn't that nice? <laughs> isn't that nicely, uh, nicely structured? So that, that's one of the cool things, again, about WordPress. I, you just do a little Ajax call right here. You build in this function to, to spit out this JSON file of exactly what you need. And, and again, WordPress, we can, we can, I'm not really going to dive into how you do that or, or all the technical details of that, but that's what makes WordPress so easy that you can, you can do it so quick. Because right now, I'm actually really appreciating WordPress even more. I'm building a custom application, not using WordPress, and I have to build the API myself, the authentication myself, and wow, that takes some time to do, if, if any of you have ever done it. So it makes me really appreciate WordPress that you can just run that WP query function, spit it out like this, and bam, it's, it's nice and clean, ready to go, and takes a lot less time. So, so that's what I'm doing right there, right? And you can see, uh, I've got my title. We saw in the HTML before, I had my result.title, course type. I've got my link to the actual, like, the, the full post. My address, city, state, uh, latitude, longitude. So, let's get back here. Um, well, no, I want to keep showing you guys that. All right, how that's working. Cool, so, so that's working right. I've got my developer tools open there. Let's close that. And it pulls in my list. And I'm actually not using Vue.js to its full potential right here. I could be doing more. I could be throwing in some really cool animations when each one of these loads in. You can make each one like pop in and do stuff like that. Yeah? Where did you get your latitude? Uh, latitude, longitude, man. We can have a whole talk on that. Yeah, so, so yeah, that was actually uh, manual input for each course. I mean, there's only like, you know, like 200 courses. Um, so they actually had that data. We did have to clean up some of that, that data for latitude, longitude, yeah. But Google Maps, that's where we got it from. Yeah, you pay an intern, you know, to find that. <laughs> um, so, uh, so, yeah, so Vue.js would allow me to do some, some even more fun things here. But if I wanted to, to modify this again, you know, uncheck and just see what private golf courses or in a 10 mile radius San Francisco. There we go. And you see there's kind of a little bit of animation how the other ones fade out and these new ones fade in. But basically that data is being dynamically replaced. Like I said, now, now I have a, a reactive web page. It's a, it's a reactive application right away. Um, and then I can change it to 50 miles, bam, and there we go. And then my map populates as well, but that really doesn't have anything to do with view. That's just Google Maps. So. All based on view, all, all done you know, on the front end. This is really just a one page site. I'm just using like the index.php file here and then loading everything here. Each course does have its own actual like page right here, which I'm kind of loading in and it takes a minute because this map, oh, that's cool. All right, don't look at that. <laughs> I'm sure the client will want to see that. All right, 
anyway, so, so I am using WordPress to load each individual course page like that. You know, that was styled similar to how they wanted it styled. And um, so I shouldn't say it's only a single page website, but all the functionality is, is on this home page right here. And then each page just has information about the golf course. So all using Vue. And I want to show you how I loop through the results, right? So I got my results. I showed you that file, that JSON file that had kind of all that nice clean data in there. So now I'm looping through that. We would call that, let's say you call that items, right? That would be my array of data, all my JSON data. And this is, I hate the foo and bar thing here, but I just used it, I'm sorry. And uh, <laughs> the, uh, I'm using the V4, like I showed you before. No, I don't think I got into this. The V4 is another really powerful thing. It's kind of like a for each loop, right? In PHP or in JavaScript, a for each, you're looping through a whole bunch of items, right? So you're going item by item. And here in this example, you're spitting out the message of that item, which, as you can see down here, here is the message. So then my result, you can see on the bottom of the screen there, foo and bar, right? So that V4, again, is another new kind of concept that you put it directly in your HTML, you loop through that data, and there you go. You can style it, you can manipulate it, do whatever you want to. You can do a whole bunch of extra things that Vue will let you do after you've, you've looped through it, or even before you look through it. Um, but again, another kind of new thing in, in Vue that really kind of blew my mind once I found out how to use it and how powerful it could be. Okay. So the items, could that be your JSON? Exactly. Exactly, yes. So that would be my, my JSON file would be the items. But in just in this example, it's the, the data down below there. Yes, that's exactly right. Yep. Any other questions about that? Cool. All right. Now, in WordPress, again, like I said in the beginning, yes? Do you have a router? No. No, for this example, no router is needed, I'm just using WordPress. Okay. Yep, and we, we can dive into that later about using Vuex and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, for, for this situation, I'm just using WordPress because it's just a, a WordPress theme. Yep. So like I said before, we can drop uh, the Vue.js script tag right into WordPress, just like you would do with, uh, with jQuery right there. Just pretty much exactly what I did in that theme for the NCGA. And this is uh, just a little bit more about how I got that data. <clears throat> I told you I wouldn't really go into it too much, but how I got that, that JSON endpoint or that nice clean response from WordPress is in my functions.php file. Um, there, there's great tutorials out there about this, about the WP Ajax function there that lets you create a, an Ajax endpoint and do return to it whatever you want. You can return posts, images, cat pictures, anything. And I just manipulated that to give it the data that I needed. So I hope that kind of makes sense. When I, when I try to explain things, because I'm not from a programmer world, it doesn't come out usually like programmers <coughs> speak, I don't think. I hope not. I hope it's a little bit more relatable. But um, sometimes if it isn't, I apologize. Just call me out on it. All right. So I already showed you the kind of the ideal response, this nice, clean data, right? That's what we want. However, sometimes. You don't get that uh, if you go through a REST API. But there's nothing wrong with that, I, and, and I do really enjoy the REST API. Do all of you know that your, your websites, I mean, right away, um, have this, this API like enabled? If you go to this, oh, that's right, you can't see the URL real good. It's really tiny. Um, if I can make, nope, I can't make that bigger. Anyway. My URL up there, if you put any of your WordPress websites, wp-json slash wp slash v2, I know it's a little bit to remember, but if you put that up there, you'll get some information that looks like this about your website. And anybody can kind of ping it. You can protect it and, and disable it if you want, but anybody can get data from your website like that and use it in their own application if they really wanted to. But the good thing is so can you. That's what makes WordPress's uh, REST API really, really cool. It's like ready to go out of the box. Like I said, building this from scratch is pretty tough and very time consuming, like I'm doing for a different project right now. So the fact that this is readily available to you um, well, kind of really opens up your world of what you can do with WordPress. If you're just building, like a preface, if you're just building client-based websites, just pretty looking websites, 
you probably don't need this. You probably don't need to worry about this. You probably don't need Vue.js. I don't know. But if you want some interactivity, some reactivity, and building a little bit more application style websites, then this is what you probably want to use. So, fun fact, if you didn't know that, hopefully you already knew that about the, uh, the WP API and uh, the kind of whole little just URL scheme there. Again, I apologize for that being so hard to read up top in the URL. All right, but that's, that's our response that you can get from it, and you can do with whatever you want with it. When I first learned that, like I, like I said, I've been doing this for over 10 years, and when I, this was like two or three years ago, when I finally discovered this, and I was like, wait a second, you can do so much. You can just have WordPress just as your backend and build a completely non-WordPress looking website with a completely different router, so your links look different. Nobody would really know it's WordPress on the front end. Uh, you can build applications. I actually built a little CRM internally for our company based on WordPress, uh, just using the API. Um, because the API as well lets you post to it, like update posts, create new posts, things like that. Um, and again, it makes it really powerful and pre-built. Like if you need like an MVP, a minimum viable product to like show a client of what's possible, like if I were going to build a CRM, I might just use WordPress, build it out um, the way I think it should be built. Front end would just be pulling in data from the WP API and bam, be good. I could build that very, very quickly. Now I'm sure if we, like you got investors, they wanted more security or something different, you may have to build that you know completely from scratch. But getting it going right away, and for most use cases, it's like it's solid. It's good to go. All right. So this is kind of a little bit what I did. Ooh. Okay, sorry. Thought we were really moving here. We got a little bit of time left. Um, we got to be first to lunch, right? <laughs> we got to win. Um, okay, so my template dash view, this is basically like what I did in the, uh, the my, my NCGA theme right there that I built. You got your header, this is what you do in, in WordPress. Get your header, get your footer down below. Get it, instead of having our, our content and our loop in the middle, uh, that's like where I actually perform my, you know, Ajax call in my functions PHP file. And I used view right here to, to mount onto that div ID app. And, uh, and then I got my data. My data didn't look like this, and it, you know, I actually pulled from the, that endpoint from that JSON response. But this is like something that you can, you know, do right, right there. And that, that's kind of an example of how your actual PHP file might look. So, in, in my talk here, I kind of talked about, you know, building a SPA, single-page application, and this is exactly what I was just talking about with WordPress as the data source, right? You got your, your API giving you that data, and then on the front end, you can do whatever you want with it. You can make custom pages, custom routes, log in, log out. Now, <clears throat> this is the only cool graphic. The, Tiffany in her, her talk, she had such cool pictures and stuff like that. This is the only cool graphic I have in mind. So um, this presentation was actually built with Vue.js and WordPress, uh, the exact way that I've been talking about this entire time. So uh, I'm using uh, local by Flywheel, which is really cool for running a local instance of WordPress. And a little shout out to them. And then the actual slides are right here, right? So each post is one slide. Show you my very first slide right there if we go into visual mode, right? That was, if we recall, 45, 40 minutes ago. That first slide, there it is. And I'm using Vue.js to loop through it on the front end through each slide. So I just put all my slides this, to, like, to like actually build this instead of build a PowerPoint presentation, which may have taken me forever to, to figure out all my animations that I wanted and all that cool stuff. Um, this took me maybe like an hour. I, I just spun up this site real quick. It didn't matter what theme that I was using on the front end of this site because that didn't matter because I was just getting the actual data from these posts. And then I'll show you the actual, um, and I, I did put this on GitHub too, if you guys are interested. It's, it's nothing crazy. Let's go, like I said, live. We're not gonna be coding here, I'm just gonna be showing you a little code. Never goes great. Oh, there you go. Now you guys can see that URL, right? So there's the URL I pinged to get my response. I've got some data right here. I got my, my post data, my page index, party mode. That's that's turning it, you know, the, the night mode. Um, I can use my key. <laughs> I thought party mode was more fun. 
Um, I can use my uh, key arrows, my left and right, to control the slides. That's what I've been doing the whole time for this, this slideshow, is using my left and right keys. And basically, I have some JavaScript functions. Um, so I'm using Axios, which is um, like jQuery's uh, Ajax function. It basically goes and fetches a website. So it's actually fetching my URL right here. It's fetching that JSON file, pulling it back in. And then, I'm sorry? Axios is a completely separate library. You can actually use library, uh, Axios with, with anything, with any other JavaScript library. Yeah, yeah completely separate. Um, you can also use the, the fetch uh, function, I believe, which is not yet supported everywhere. But so Axios is, is pretty awesome for that. So we're getting that data back, right, from my URL that I showed you guys earlier um, in my response. And then uh, obviously you got my error handling there. Really simple, right? I, this is my, oh, say simple. It's not easy, it's simple. Um, I got my next page here, right? That goes to the next page. I got my previous page that allows my left and, and right arrow keys to go. Yes, ah, yes, I do. Exactly, yeah. So, so here's one of the, the that, that's a really good catch. One of the, if I can find my, where is it? There it is. Ah. One of the caveats, that was a good catch, one of the caveats of my uh, posts here, or of each uh, slide, if I wanted to add a new one in here between you know, getting data from WordPress and my Ajax response, I'd have to put it in there chronologically. I could have, I, yeah, exactly. That's exactly all I had to do. Yep, I just changed the publish date. Yep, that's all I did. So I'd, I'd look even at quick edit, and I'd be like, all right, it's at 12.10, all right, I need to make the one at 12.11. And that was it. So that's the only like little caveat. You could do it with like order if you really wanted to, and then do something a little extra, but no big deal. I just had to change the publish date. So um, yes, good catch. Where's code? There it is. Okay, cool. So getting back to that, um, the location dot hash, the window location. So this allowed me to actually, if you saw in the in the actual slides, and you see in my URL, you see the URL, it's tough to see, but it says hashtag 23. So that's like the actual slide number that I'm on. I'm on the 23rd slide. Why do I keep losing it? There we go. All right. Now, here's what I love and hate about programming. This is so awesome, right? So this, like I said, this took me maybe, okay, maybe two hours, right, to build, like, to do those slides, like, to get the titles of it. I already had the outline, you know, written on, on another document and everything. And then I built this pretty quick, um, not too bad. thing that took me the longest, probably another like two, three hours of Googling and like banging my head against the wall, was this one piece of code right here. Uh, actually, actually, yeah, just this little section right here. Friggin' prism is what you um, use to, that's the fancy uh, highlighting that you use for code. So, oh, now we can't get out of there. Uh, oh, there you go. Yeah, uh, oh yeah, here. Just to, just to show the, the fancy like syntax highlighting right here, right? That's called a little library called Prism. Well, when you would go to my next slide, you'd lose all that formatting. Like this would look like just a garbled mess. It wouldn't look like nicely formatted like this. Like it would look like junk. So I was like, why? It looked great on the first slide, but every other slide after that, it was complete crap. It was just not working. So that literally, it took me longer to debug that than it did to like do my whole presentation, <laughs> right? So that was awesome. So if I, you have to basically rerun this function every time uh, the view is updated, which is called this little next tick function. So every time a new slide enters, that little function there is rerunning. And I found on this one like glorious blog post that I finally found. I was like, oh, thank you. So you got you got to love programming sometimes. It's amazing. All right. So hopefully I've given you guys a little bit of an insight. Hopefully I wasn't jumping around too too much um, about what you can do with Vue.js, uh, what you can do with uh, the WordPress API. Um, like I said in the in the last slide of that. Uh, of my slides here on that URL, you'll actually see some links. I got my CodePen collection up there. If you just want to hop in the CodePen and start toggling around with Vue and messing around with it, go nuts. Other links up there are great. Um, and 
Uh, side plug, I do have a little podcast called The Strong Web uh, that I started not too long ago. It had some really good speakers, it had like Chris Coyer, Dan Mall. Um, I had the founder of uh, Statomic on there, Jack McDade, really cool. Um, so I'm trying to get some more people from the WordPress community on there as well, so check that out. Sorry for the shameless plug, Julian. <laughs> um, but anyway, questions, yes? Uh, did, you, did you have any thoughts about accessibility? About accessibility, sure, sure. So with uh, Vue and, and any kind of like reactive kind of front-end based um, uh, uh, framework, where in the, if you looked at the HTML, you would see like one div. Like if you look at a React app you, or, or a Vue app, you might see like one div sitting there, no content, right? Because it's all loaded dynamically. Um, it depends on, I guess, uh, the accessibility of like Google being able to parse all that information correctly. Um, there are ways around that where you can do more server-side rendered stuff, but that's kind of gets in a little bit other things. But I mean, overall, um, like rendering an application just like these slides that I built would be pretty good and pretty indexable by Google. I couldn't tell you all like the little intricacies of it because I really don't know. Uh, I but oh, oh. Yes, like a screener and everything. Um, as, as long as you use, uh, you know, semantic markup, there, there shouldn't be any, I really, I couldn't say, I've never tried it before, but I mean, everything is semantic. As long as you use semantic markup and HTML and everything that you build, you should be good to go. Yeah. Any other questions about Vue? So, the strong web, where is the link? Ah, oh, sorry, thestrongweb.com. There's a, a link in the slides. For larger view applications, do you have any pointers about maybe make, like keeping things maintainable or like, yes. how, like some best practices that you want to share? I think that's the biggest thing with view that yeah. me off. So. Yeah, so with larger view applications um, and not really like using them in just a WordPress theme, well, I guess even in a WordPress theme as well, you can use components which if you come from React world, components are a very big thing. Vue has their own components, which I really enjoy um, using because a Vue component is your HTML, your JavaScript, and your CSS, all in one. It's not, it's not, and it's not JSX, it's not like inline CSS, but it's those three components in one file, and that's like a component. You can pass props in there, um, you can give it data, receive data from it, it can talk to other components. Um, yeah, com componentizing is, is a huge piece of view that, like I said, in, in bigger applications is, is awesome. So if you guys do really go down the view road, there's a lot, lot more than what I covered. Like I said, this is just touching the surface of what view can do. So yeah. <clears throat> Uh, yes, yes. So I was wondering if you would speak to a that is, there is a view, uh, um, a little, I don't know what you'd call it, uh, there's a little piece of view, uh, they already, it's, it's ready for that. It's a special piece of code, um, and the question is, basically when you render uh, your view, or your WordPress API, um, you may see uh, a little issue, not in this one, but you may get an issue with the actual content it gives you back from your, ah, right here, content rendered, right? You've got actual HTML in your JSON response here, like this did and stuff like that. Sometimes JavaScript does not know what to do with that. Vue comes with a built-in directive that handles that. You say, this is HTML coming from this JSON response, boom, spits it out perfect. Yeah, how secure it is. How secure? I don't know. I would assume it's really good <laughs> in terms of being secure. Um, I, I would hope, I, I really haven't come across that issue and I've never looked into it, so I don't have the perfect answer for it, but I imagine they're, they're pretty on it. WordPress should sanitize the mm. output from the API, so there we go. in my opinion, it should be a back-end issue, and WordPress does take care of sanitization. So it should already, okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, right. Is called, but in React they call it uh, set dangerous or dangerously set HTML. Oh, that's funny. You have to know that you're doing something that could Oh, okay. like have an SS attack or something. But it should be sanitized by WordPress. Yes, before it even gets there. Yeah. And actually I think it's called VHTML. 
now that I think about it, because I have used that before. So yeah, good question. Mm -hmm. Other questions? It's time for lunch. Good? Cool. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.